uh, coffee business serving, one of the people business serving coffee, not the coffee business serving people. Um, and, you know, when we're trained as store managers, uh, we actually don't look at, you know, sales is something we don't look at right away. Um, and customers is something we don't look at right away. We look first to improve the morale between store partners. So we call each other partners because everybody that works for Starbucks company, whether you're in a coffee farm, or if you are a barista like Caitlin, a part-time barista, or a full-time store manager like me, um, gets free stock. So we call each other partners. So we all own part of the company. And it makes you know everybody kind of take a little bit more pride in their job because everybody wants to get paid more. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we always talk about that. And uh, Starbucks coffee stores, or the shops that you guys buy coffee in, uh, we refer to as the third place. So for a lot of people, Steve, for example, it's the place that he feels comfortable in and spends time in when he's not at work or at home. So your first place is your home, your second place is your job, and your third place would be Starbucks. So we have lots of customers, not just Steve, that we know by name or by drink, and we're really encouraged to learn about customers more than just you know the fact that we want their money. So the first thing we take care of is each other, and then directly that follows that is if we're taking care of each other, then our customers are gonna be happy. So if our store partners are happy, our customers are gonna be happy, and then pretty much everything after that follows. So we don't really focus on you know, I focus as a store manager on increasing sales and productivity and minimizing costs. But, you know, when we're, when, when it all comes down to it, the most important thing is to keep each other happy. So, Starbucks is, I mean, I, this is the fourth major retail company I've worked for, and it's the only one that's focused mostly on employees. Uh, and part time employees get full, uh, you know, Caitlin working 25, 30 hours a week get the same benefits as a full time store manager. So uh, it's very partner friendly. So Anderson, your philosophy, if I understand it, or your branding, is something I'd never heard before, which sounds like rather than focus first and foremost on the customer, which is ultimately your goal, right. you do it by focusing on one another. Right, and, and then the logical the outcome is that customers feel comfortable because you're comfortable. Right. Something along those lines. And customers don't want to go to a place that, you know, the employees aren't happy in. So we take care of each other first and then everything after that follows is basically the, the motto. Do, is your turnover high or is it store by store? Like, I know that they're individually owned, but how do you guys... They're not like, individually they're, owned. Oh, they're not? Yeah. Oh, it's a, oh, okay. So in terms of the turnover, how yeah. does that... So like I get about like on my performance reviews, I'm evaluated based on my store turnover. So I have to keep people like for it to not negatively impact the store, I have to keep people for a minimum of six months. Oh, okay. um, turnover in my store has not been an issue at all. Um, but I mean, it has been an issue. It's you know in other stores. So uh, another question might be, in terms of taking care of one another, how does that actually look? Oh, a, a, thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So when you first start working at Starbucks, we do uh, the store manager. So me, I'll sit down with someone I hire, uh, and we do what's called first impressions. And you basically get an overview for uh, the expectations the company has on you, the expectations I, as your boss, will have uh, for you. And we talk about the green apron behaviors. So these are five behaviors that we uh, use every single day with each other, with our customers, and people that we do business with. So if you, did you? Does everybody have a question? I wonder if yeah, you could, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, if you would use Caitlin as an example. If she came in, then what kind of question would you, how would you uh, interview her, so to speak? You want me to interview Caitlin? Well, just oh, because she's next she, to you. She has a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, well, Caitlin can read to you what the five green apron behaviors are. Great. Okay, so the first one is be welcoming. So should offer everyone a sense of belonging. And be genuine. Connect, discover, and respond. Be knowledgeable, love what you do, and share it with others. Be considerate, take care of yourself, each other, and our environment. Be involved in the store, in the company, and in the community. 
That's, that's fine. A bit. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it, at the back of the book, it gives you, you know, specific examples of the different behaviors and what you're supposed to do. So be welcoming. You know, greet customers as they walk through the door. Customize your approach to each person. So we just had a store meeting, and I talked about to these guys um, about how how important it is to judge who your customer is. You can't have the same customer service with everybody. So we're right across the street from a train station. So from seven to ten, we get the train traffic. So people don't really want to spend a lot of time with us. Not that they were not amazing. They just have to go places. So we talked a lot about in our store meeting about how to approach a customer who looks like they have 30 seconds to get in and out of the store, as opposed to someone like Steve, who comes in and talks to us and hangs out with us for a little while, and just the differences in, in terms of that. So in other words, and this is, this is fascinating to me, because it, 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 it almost goes against this idea of you treat everyone the same with equal um, almost a script for every person. You actually individualize your interaction with customers. Right. And as and as a Starbucks man, I mean, I've been a manager in different companies. And as a Starbucks manager, we're we're taught the same way. With like, I'm not supposed to treat all my partners the same way or talk to them all the same way. We're supposed to personalize it more. So for me to get the most possible work out of Caitlin is going to be totally different than the way I would get someone else to. And that's the same way we approach our customers. Is we're going to have to talk to them differently because they're all different people. It's not just, this is how you provide customer service. This is what you, when I managed borders, there was like an outline of five things we were supposed to say to every single customer. So every single customer doesn't want to hear those five things. And you can tell, and if they're standing in line and they're tapping their foot or they're checking their watch, you know, they kind of want to just get in and get out. So it's better customer service to actually just get them in and get them out than it would be to ask them the mandatory five questions that other companies want. So, I so have a quick question. If Caitlin, and of course she has a job, but if she were interviewing for your job, mm -hmm. are there particular qualities or traits you know, that maybe can't be learned that you look for in an employee? Um, I, think, I think for the most part you can teach someone pretty much anything. Maybe the level of how much you care about what you well, want to do I mean, is the only thing I don't think general, do they tend to have... Um, oh, I mean, like, when I interview people, I look for, you know, outgoing people, people that like to talk, uh -huh. um, not people that are shy or quiet. More and based on, based on their experience, so, you know, I never went to college, so, but, you know, we don't really look at that. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was, what retail experience do you have? Um, so for them, you know, anything similar like Caitlin was a pastry chef, so it's pretty much directly related. I didn't hire Caitlin, but that and serving coffee, it's both food service industry, so it's very similar. Do you guys, in the hiring process, do you have a series of questions? Yes. Like the same questions you ask every candidate? So we have what's called a, a star form, and it's um, what we do, we do behavioral interviewing, so when I interview people, um, I'll call them into the store, we'll sit down, we'll you know, have a cup of coffee, uh, and then there's about eight questions that I ask them, and we want them to be as specific as possible with their answers, and I'll actually write down their entire answer. And then each question, uh, we give them a one, two, or three, so one would be do not hire, two would be uh, possible hire, and three would be hire. And so if there's ever anybody um, uncertain of hiring, I can call up another store manager in the area and have them come and do a double interview. You said eight questions? Um, no, there's like there's like six or seven. Six, oh, six, or, six seven. or seven questions, and those are the ones we have to ask everybody. And then I usually get into people's like availabilities, their job history. That's not part of it. So one of the questions would be like, have you ever seen at a previous job? Have you ever seen a coworker not doing something by company policy? And then you would answer, and then I would kind of get into it of like, okay, so what did you do? Uh, what would you have done differently? Um, trying to really see what type of person they are. So we like to hire people with character and have integrity. You know, I just wanted to get your take on this and, and whether or not this is just unique to your store um, or maybe it's just more of it. But when I, as a customer, when I come to the Pleasantville Starbucks, um, I notice that everybody is informal, who's working there, informal or call it casual, um, uh, you appear as if you genuinely are friends or friendly and truly like each other genuinely. And I'm just wondering if that's cultivated or how does that come about? So genuine is one of the green neighbor behaviors, so thanks for bringing that up. But we actually, there's like this, there's this, I was, I was thinking about bringing the laptop, but um, 
there's this really lame customer service video that Starbucks has, and she's like, hi Steve, how are you today? So, you know, we talk about that kind of thing, but uh, in actuality, that's not really, that's not me being genuine, so when Steve comes in, I'm like, hey Steve, what's going on? And, you know, it's kind of boring if you talk to every customer that way. Is it a little bit like... It's like cheesy, and it's you don't want to be there, and you don't feel like, yeah. you know... You're kind of in a restaurant sometime, and you have a waitress who kind of goes through the obligatory, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? And you kind of kind of sense that it's not really genuine. Right. But so. I, I, I mean, do, we do and all really like each other, so we, I, we are happy there. And but as a manager then, or a leader uh, in your group, you, you want to cultivate that? Is that kind of part of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather them, you know, because well, I think their customer service is better if they're being who they are instead of you know, an outline for what someone wants them to be like. But does Starbucks give you, like, do they give you kind of free reign to manage your people the way you want to, or do they say, okay, as long as you keep it within these guidelines? I mean, do you guys have career apparel? Do you have to wear a certain, you know, dress? Yeah, so we have dress code. Yeah. So <laughs> it's khaki or black pants, black shoes, and a white or black polo shirt. Okay. Um, can't show any tattoos. If you have any tattoos, you have to cover them up. If you have any face piercings other than your ears, you have to take them out. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, we wear an apron. Mm -hmm. I have to wear an apron. And I also notice um, and the girls have to tie their hair back. I notice yes. a great degree of diversity among the employees, uh, uh, males and females and ethnicities and so on. And is that also? Yeah, I mean Starbucks. Starbucks, Starbucks is an equal opportunity employer. Yeah, um, we have cafe attendants in some of the stores that are, you know, severely learning disabled and we work with a couple organizations to get people jobs that normally would have a hard time getting jobs. Um, and, you know, Starbucks is a GLBT company, so friendly towards gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people. Um, yeah, I mean, it's always better to have diversity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed that um, you have an awful lot of community signage and uh, I, the latest program I noticed was something about helping Americans get jobs. And so on. Is that also a, um, you know, a, a, a conscious decision by Starbucks to be? Yeah. So there's actually uh, community involvement is a category on my performance review at the end of the year on how much I've gotten, you know, my staff to go out and do events with the community. So I know last year I took a bunch of people. We did Earth Day and cleaned a park in Rockland. And um, Howard Schultz is trying to get, you know, a million total community service hours from store managers next year. Um, so yeah, we try and do stuff in the community. Uh, the Jacob Byrne Film Center is a small movie theater in Pleasantville, and they offer classes to kids. I'm actually working with my district manager right now, uh, who's my direct boss. I'm getting them a $10,000 grant so they can open more programs for kids. Um, and I know a couple weeks ago, I did a walk. One of the high school students that goes to, well that went to Pleasantville High School was hit by a drunk driver, so they did a they did a walk to raise money for awareness for that, so I went and I brought coffee and we hung out with them for like an hour. Um, so we try and do as much as possible in the community. Okay, the last big question, in a sense, for me at least, um, relates to the inevitable conflict that has to arise on, on, arise on occasion, either with a customer or with a colleague. How do you, how are you trained, or what is the Starbucks? <laughs> You know, so we actually, uh, have, we actually have, a word, we have a word for it. Uh huh. <laughs> Do you know what it is? <laughs> See, so it's latte, and it's an acronym uh -huh. for what we're supposed to do. So if you have a problem, do you know what it, do you know what it stands for? Can you share? It? Uh, so and that'll be on Caitlin's review. So L, so it's latte, right? So L is listen. So you want to listen to what the customer has to say. Uh, acknowledge. So acknowledge the fact that there's a problem. T, mm -hmm. right? T would be next. Mm -hmm. Thank the customer for bringing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, take action. So you, what can you possibly do to fix the problem right then? And then E is encourage the customer to return. So you're not happy, so we're going to do everything we can to make you happy and to get you to come back. Okay. And, and, uh, and I, told, I told them at the store meeting that, uh, you know, especially with today's economy, we're not in the position to lose one customer. But so... And in your evaluation of this, you know, there's a lot of energy that goes into nurturing a culture that you're describing. But what's the payoff, both to you personally and to the organization or the company? What do you, what do you see the payoffs to be for you as employees and, Employee. and, and as a store manager? You know, there's the bottom line, of course. How about, how about a case? Bottom line is we talked about the bottom line. 
<laughs> so it doesn't matter how much you're selling it's if you're not bringing anything to the bank? Something like that. I, I, and, and just a chance so, to express your... <laughs> so... <laughs> the payoff for me? For working at Starbucks? <laughs> if you wouldn't. Um, for me, I just do because I love working there. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm in school, but I'm real, I really enjoy being there. I actually spend most of my time outside of work there, too. So a lot of our staff does. Yeah, I just do when they come in and hang out on their days off, and, you know, we do stuff that we went bowling together, so. There's a um, lot of camaraderie in the Hey, I mean, obviously it's going to the bottom line. If people are happy, they're going to spend more money in the store. Uh, we get evaluated on our customer service, so we have, you know, the surveys that print out. Um, so, you know, that's something that we're, ba you know, ranked on in our store uh, is customer service. So people fill out, you know, like five question surveys on their computer about how their experience was. And uh, to what extent would you attribute maybe this culture of Starbucks um, being responsible for some for reasonable amount of success, even in an economy that is so devastating to so many other, uh, particularly small businesses and large, actually. You mean how how do you think Starbucks is thriving? Yeah, yeah, surviving and maybe even thriving at a time when you know unemployment is high. Uh, Starbucks is not the lowest priced commodity people can buy. There is a McDonald's down the street. But you seem to sustain the amount of uh, clients and customer loyalty. It seems that way. In yeah. Well, I mean, I think it comes. It all comes from the top. And when you have a CEO who's actively trying to do things in the community and you know network with other businesses, um, I think it helps. And you know, I think it all comes from the top down. So it's not you know working for corporate that you don't necessarily agree with their life, they're all doing things that benefit you as employees and benefit the community that you're working in. So I think you're a lot happier to be there. Okay. Are there other questions that you know people might have that you'd like to hear about? Um, as far as corporate giving, do you does Starbucks have a certain let's say like certain programs or products that they give to? Like are they really big on education? Could be one of them is it um, like as a whole, yeah. I mean, when when things happen, we're usually one of the first. Like we gave two and a half. Like the, the day after the tsunami hit, we gave two and a half million dollars to Japan. So, uh, but I mean, they pretty much they like to leave it open. Like right now, as a company, we're doing uh, create jobs for America. So we have in the stores wristbands, and if customers donate five dollars, none of the money goes to Starbucks. So if you donate five dollars, you get a wristband. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes to, and we invest it, so it's actually, if you spend $5 in the store, it becomes $35. Uh, and we, the, all that money goes to creating jobs in small businesses. And how, do they, how are they doing that? What do you mean? How are they creating jobs? Well, we're not the ones, we're, we're raising the money to create jobs. Okay. So, how, like, it's, we're... It's for a non-profit. Right. Like, it's a different group that the money goes to. Okay. So, like, as a district, we have pretty, like, I'm the community service lead in... Northern Westchester for the stores. So like we think of things. So when we had the the our district meeting, you know, we thought of different things that we wanted to do. So we wanted to go to like the AIDS walk and the MS walk and stuff like that. So I mean, every district's different, and we try and do things for Earth Day. But as a company, I mean, I know we're we're pretty partnered up with Red Cross, and when natural disasters do happen, we we do a lot. And when uh, uh, when Katrina happened, I wasn't working with Starbucks, but I know uh, Howard Schultz paid for every store manager to go down to New Orleans and volunteer. So they went for five days. So they had leadership there too. So they had conferences and meetings, but when they weren't doing that, they were volunteering and building houses. So that's, you know, 17,000 store managers mm -hmm. in the United States, so. I've got a special question for Kate. Uh -oh. Perfect. <laughs> because I, I also am very interested in the topic of leadership, management, that sort of thing. How would you describe, if, to the extent that you can, um, oh jeez. <laughs> Jake's management style or leadership style. You can give us an example of uh, how he might uh, help you or not help you, so to speak, no if you pressure. had a problem. <laughs> uh, <that's interesting>. no. <laughs> I can get in trouble. No, he has Jake has a lot of energy. I guess he gets everyone really pumped up. He's super organized. 
when it comes to running the place. Um, but I, I, mean, I guess just being really fair, but not, I mean, fair isn't always the same, equal. Um, I don't know, I think we all have a, a different relationship with Jake, and um, I don't know, I think everyone considers him almost like as a, a friend at the same time, so it, it's easy to listen to him and... You know, How do you think he's him. able to, you know, promote this uh, friendly atmosphere and still hold people accountable? <laughs> or maybe Jake himself. Please, by example. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm getting at. I know. I just kind of want to. Yeah, you know, uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Because it sounds like a, a tricky. Well, I try and get them, like I try and get them really excited for everything. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I would I would never ask any of them to do something I wouldn't do. Um, definitely lead by example. I coach. It's more important to me not to tell Caitlin that this is what we have to do. Period. It's to explain why we have to do certain things. So. Um, you know, Starbucks for a long time made multiple drinks at the same time. So when I'm telling them about why we only make one drink at a time now, it's not just this is what the company wants us to do, period. It's the fact that last year Starbucks wasted $800,000 on milk. Or the fact that we want every customer's wait time to be the same, which should be like 25 to 30 seconds. So when I think the more, that I, the, like, the more knowledge I can share with them, the easier it is for them to want to do the right thing because they don't just think, like, they don't view it as this is something I have to do or I'm going to get reprimanded for it, but this is something I'm going to do because I know what the results will be if I don't. Not just for our store, but for like the entire company. And you know, when stock's $44 a share, you know, that's something that you're pretty vested in is someone who gets free. So when it comes time to, you know... Um, Hold someone accountable? Because I'm, I'm a manager too, and I know it's so much fun to work with somebody you like and it's friendly atmosphere, but it's tough when you really have to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. How do you go about doing that? Um, well, I mean, we have, you know, we call it a corrective action process because we want to correct the behaviors. Um, so it really depends. I mean, I fired someone a couple weeks ago for time and attendance issues. Um, but there's always, like, there's a step. So we give them... Uh, a verbal warning that's documented and we have them sign off and we have a discussion about why they got that and then if the same thing happens again they get a written and then if the same thing happens again they get a final and if it happens a fourth time we separate. We call it a separation which is basically a involuntary termination. Would you say as a manager you follow that by step by step by step? You have to because our uh, human resources department is huge and they will call you if you don't. And I've gotten phone calls. Um, you know, like people will complain if they don't think you're being fair or anything and then, you know, human resources will call me and I'll talk to them directly and, you know, we'll work through it and they'll suggest things or tell me that it was fine and that the employee was not right. Um, so yeah, you have to follow it. Uh, there are different levels of severity, obviously, so being five minutes late is not considered the same severity as someone who no call no shows. Just like if you are, you know, not super friendly with the customer, it's totally different than if you tell a customer to F off. Yeah. So I can kind of use that, you know, as a guideline so I can skip things if I need to or if I feel appropriate and if not. And Starbucks doesn't frown on like fraternizing at all. Like you said, you went out, you go bowling with them, you guys. So that's for out. store events. Right? So, it's, so my, I can't hang out with them now. Right, okay. So when they come in and hang out with you guys, that's their choice. That's in the they, store? Well, yeah, right. yeah. Like I don't go, like I don't call them Friday night and right. hang out with them. Right. Well, I'd say like to bowl and stuff. No, I think that's very right. Right, cool. so we actually want, like we did really well with the promotion. So Starbucks gave us $300 for a store party. Okay. So we did that. I mean, we have like, and if we have, uh, we're going to have a holiday party. So that's not paid for by Starbucks, but because everyone's involved, you know, it's yeah. okay. <coughs> I have a last final question, a wrap-up question. Uh, because this appears to customers like myself and many others, um, to be such a friendly place, um, and a place you want to go to, do you think that this model, almost, the Starbucks model, uh, or the culture, could be used in situations like city government, or um, you know, a gas station. Uh, is there something about the model itself, or is it because people just want the coffee and it's easier for you to be friendly because pe you're giving people kind of something that uh, they're happy to have? Any 
just any thought about that at all? Well, I think they come into the stores for the coffee and stay for the connection. Um, yeah, I mean, if you go into CVS, and I worked for CVS for a while, it's totally, you know, no one really cares. Um, so does that affect CVS's sales? I'm, I'm sure to a certain extent, but, you know, once again, you have to look at, like, the clientele. Like, Starbucks caters to a pretty specific group of people. What is the demographic? Um, I was going to ask that. Like, what do you guys target? What is your demographic? I mean, I have an idea. I just want to hear. <laughs> uh, we try. We're trying to target everybody, actually, and we have um, we have a very little percentage in the Northeast of people who just drink coffee. So we're trying to expand that. Like, we only have five percent of people that come into our stores. Only five percent of them get brewed coffee. So most of them come in for like the specialty drinks and the uh, espresso-based drinks. Uh, so Dunkin' Donuts has almost forty percent of that. So this year we're. Uh, starting in January, we're launching a new coffee that's going to be similar to that, but we're you know going to keep doing all of our espresso drinks. So. And I, as a consumer, I have to say it's you, like I I think Starbucks is it's like the Nordstroms right to me of coffee. It's really I go in there, I get a good feeling. I love the people; they're always really friendly. I get intimidated. I don't know the difference between venti and <laughs> I like I don't know that language, so it's it's intimidating me. But I can go to the gas station across the street, Dunkin' Donuts, and say, I want a medium almond toasted coffee with milk and, you know, Splenda. And you do that at Starbucks, what, yeah, too. You do right. that in Starbucks, though. I mean, if I say, can I have a medium, like... We know. Yeah, we, 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 know. Do. we know it's a ground. I know, but I'm not cool. Like, I feel like I don't belong <laughs> in Starbucks. I mean, that's a direct, that's a direct <laughs> of a reflection of you and how much time you're spending in Starbucks. Do you spend more time in Starbucks? Uh, you make me want to go to Starbucks. I really there's only, there's there's only you know, there's only four sizes, right? So, I mean... <laughs> You're in, no. college, you're in college now, so at this point, in terms of your higher education, we should, you know, be able to figure out what the sizes are. Well, I just, I want to say though that I want to go, I, I think you make a very good point, though, in saying that you guys are focusing on brewed coffees, because I could care less about the lattes and the special specialty drinks. I would go to Starbucks, and I would pay a little bit more for the whole atmosphere and everything to have the same, you know, the same And coffee. location is key, too. So, like, for example, Pleasantville is always number one or number two in Westchester County when it comes to just brewed coffee because we're so close to the train station. Right. And that's what people want to drink early in the morning as opposed to a store like White Plains in the Westchester Mall when you have all those teeny boppers on <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because that's where they like to hang out. And they're catering more towards high school kids who want frappuccinos and don't really just want a cup of coffee on their way to go do something. So, and of course, I never see that crowd because... I don't get there until one in the afternoon, so I never see that train crowd. But I'm also, you, you think you don't fit into the Starbucks culture. I'm the guy that walks up to the counter and says, give me 50 cents worth. <laughs> so that's a little, uh, little odd itself. Uh, with, with that, uh, can we have a hand for our guest? Uh, you did it, dude. You've done, you done good. Thank you so much for that.